Hey guys, this is C.E. Madison, and welcome back to another episode of Saturday Night Spotlight. This week is much better. Much better news coming in, and we'll be talking about almost just a little taste of everything. So this is really good, and I hope you guys will appreciate this video compared to last week. I know last week's Saturday Night Spotlight wasn't very good, but now I got a few things to talk about, and... I think this will be really good and I hope you guys will like this too. Um, anything relating to the Yashihime series, I know Yashihime was getting a lot of attention on the Saturday Night Spotlight. I know it's a little bit hard to kind of find it because I'm just throwing a lot of information on different topics on Saturday Night Spotlight. So Yashihime now is going to be on its own playlist, the Yashihime discussions. If you are interested in Yashihime related, check out that playlist. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with HBO Max. HBO just recently started its streaming services, the HBO Max, and I was able to check it out. There were some good titles in there. You get a good list of everything. You have even a section just for Studio Ghibli if you are a Studio Ghibli film person and Studio Ghibli is like the Walt Disney of Japan. Studio Ghibli, I can't think of anything bad to say about Studio Ghibli. One of my favorite films is Princess Mononoke. I would suggest for you guys to check that out and there was a film that's on HBO Max that was recommended to me in Ghibli. Um, the Wind Rises, I believe that's what it's called. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out and you could possibly see me do a review on it. But when I was going through it, <laughs> my husband and I kind of went through HBO Max. It's weird how you have movies in the Last Chance section already. And in the Last Chance you have movies that are like big name movies. Like I like I can't believe that it hasn't even been a week since HBO Max came out. And already you have almost 20 titles in The Last Chance. Most of these movies are movies that are like big name movies. Like my husband's already not liking HBO Max for this because you have titles such as like Ma us the justice league the lego movie lego batman movie selena the new hellboy film the hobbit an unexpected journey and the hobbit the battle of the five armies that doesn't make sense to me that doesn't make sense to me why you already have some of these films that are big name films and big like titles in here it's like okay well that's kind of that kind of sucks <laughs> which a good percent of the population would like to see but you don't even know how long they're going to be there and anime fans there's even crunchy roll titles on here i'm going through the list as we speak now and there's and really there's not a lot of titles in the Crunchyroll section. You can see Your Lion April on Netflix. Um, most of these titles you can see on Funimation if you are a subscriber to Funimation streaming. I am for the dubs and I'm sorry but I prefer dubs over subs. 91 Days, Full Metal Alchemist, and Kill a Kill. If you're a fan of Kill a Kill, it's on Hulu. I kind of wish they added more titles but I don't know if this is specifically because Crunchyroll has partnered up with HBO Max. I know Crunchyroll has had a few partnerships with other streaming services, so this could be the case, but I know some of these titles are already on other streaming services, and HBO Max does have a couple of HBO originals on here. Um, there's a couple of good titles that do look interesting for others, not so much as I. I mean, you have Friends, you have Rick and Morty, you have Doctor Who, but I think it's the newer Doctor Who where there's the woman in there now. I don't know. I'm not a Doctor Who fanatic, so I don't really know exactly what's going on there. You have Joker, which I still need to see. So Joker is going to be a film that I'll be watching pretty soon. I can't really tell you for sure if HBO Max is totally worth it or not. I think it is kind of worth it. You got a lot of title. As far as whether HBO Max is for you or not, there HBO Max has a little bit of everything for everybody and if there's a couple of films that you had no idea that was out or if you wanted to see but never could or just had a hard time trying to, it's in here. There's just a little bit of everything for everybody in here. But I would say just take a look at HBO Max and see what's on here. I know there's a couple of films in here that caught my eye that I'm interested to see. I can't wait to explore more on that. 
I could maybe possibly do reviews on them. We'll see. So the next thing I want to talk about is something that is close to not only to me, but to other anime fans as well. For those that don't know, last summer, a Japanese studio animation, Kyono Anime, was unfortunately caught on fire. Sadly, this fire was not an accident. It was caused by somebody, which resulted the loss of close to 37 lives and injuring many, many more. Kyoto Animation is home to so many anime, and Kyoto Animation is known for their artwork. Some of the anime that belong to Kyoto Animation is the Netflix original Violet Evergarden, my husband's favorite, the Fate Stay series, um, my favorite series, Lucky Star, Free, Ibatobi Swim Club, Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, just, just so many, just so many anime. If you're an anime fan or not, there's at least something in there that is for you. After a year of this arson fire taking down the building, of a beloved and innocent studio, 42-year-old Shinji Aoba, the arsonist, was arrested at the hospital he was staying in in Kyoto while he was recovering from his own injuries. And this was unfortunately intentional. He had intention to light this building on fire. He said, quote, I spread gasoline around the studio. I lit it with a, I lit it with a lighter. And the reason for the long gap for his arrest was in addition to following the legal system, there was also the, the COVID-19 outbreak. But Wednesday after he was fit to be transferred out, that's when they made his arrest. And I am so happy that they finally, 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 finally going to get justice against this guy. During this time while he was being interviewed with the investigators, he said, quote, I had a grudge against Kyo Annie. And it was apparently referring to his failed entry to a novel writing contest, which I think is so f***ing pity. Just a small loss like this would make him have a total grudge against a Japanese studio, which I'm sure they're just following like their own guideline policies and rules and stuff. It's not their fault. And he continues on by saying, quote, I thought that if I sprayed gasoline around the building while setting the fire, I could kill more people. So that's why I did it. And it's, it's f***ing disgusting. I can't stand this dude. I can't stand how he can just do something like this. And he costs 36 innocent lives that were just doing their job. And this is how they're being thanked. When the investigators and the police told him that, 36 people died from the attack or later because of their injuries. The first thing he said was, quote, oh, is that so? I thought maybe about two people died, end quote. Are you f***ing stupid? How the f*** do you think two people, only two people could die in a big fire like that? And the fire is not something that just gradually grew. When you throw gasoline on a building like that, the fire is going to spread. In addition to other natural elements that's in the building that could help the fire grow, that doesn't help either. What's sad about this is that it was intentional. He had intention of wanting to kill people. He had intention to hurt people. All because he couldn't move forward with a writing novelist. And that just goes to a silent grudge for this person. And honestly, I hope this guy gets what he f***ing deserves. I really do. Kyoto Animations are having a hope that he'll be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, as he should be. Those 36 innocent lives will finally get the justice that they deserve. And while that building is no longer there, it is being set up for the memorial for those that have lost their lives against this horrific attack. <sighs> Moving on to a more happier topic now that I kind of got that small little tangent tantrum out. After the big success of Sonic the Hedgehog in February of 2020 before the coronavirus came into play, it has been confirmed that our favorite Blue Hedgehog is getting a sequel. It is one of the underdog genres biggest victories ever. First originally being started as a video game, now moved to a movie. The expectations to everybody is it's an it's going to be another failed video game movie. But actually, Sonic was able to rise out from the underdog level as it made 
306.8 million dollars worldwide at the box office. No video game film was able to make that goal in the box office. It was originally supposed to be released in November of 2019, however with the failed concept art of Sonic, the fans had an outrage. They were putting their entire opinions out on social media that the look of Sonic was so... it was nothing like our favorite blue hedgehog. This creature was a monstrosity. We can't even call it Sonic. We had no idea what it is. So with the director and the producer hearing the fans, they delayed the film to come out in February of 2020 while fixing Sonic's look. And I am so glad they did. I'm really glad that they were able to stop and listen and say, okay, we know what you guys are saying. We will delay the film to fix Sonic's character. And I'm so glad they did. I really am glad that they were able to do that. Just a small spoiler alert if you guys have not seen Sonic the Hedgehog. The ending did leave Sonic wide open. You have the ring showing up and then Tails just pops out from the ring and oh my god. I didn't see this film opening night. I saw it the day after but it was crowded in that theater and the cheers and the uproar when Tails came out. It was like oh my god. You did it. You obviously are going to say that a sequel is coming because you just got everybody's hopes up. And the previous film that we saw before Sonic was Birds of Prey. Now we saw Birds of Prey opening night. We weren't planning to, but the idea just came from my husband saying, hey, do you want to see Birds of Prey? And I said, but I think it's going to be crowded though because it's opening night. He's like, huh, we'll see. I was like, okay. So we went, we got our tickets, and when we sat down, we got we usually get there pretty early so when we got there there was there was close to maybe close to 20 people there which isn't a lot again we got there early so I was thinking well we're still early we'll just maybe wait for more people to come once the opening titles came in for birds of prey nobody else came in I said oh my god this is the smallest gathering I've seen for opening night for birds of prey and then when we returned week later with Sonic the Hedgehog full. It was full. It was packed. I said, I'm so glad I got my tickets. I can't believe how packed it was. So confirmed is the sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog. We don't know much about it. All we know is that obviously Tails is going to come into play. And I can't wait for Tails. So if we have Tails coming, who knows who else is going to be coming. There was obvious hints and theories that in the beginning Knuckles made his appearance while he was chasing Sonic. So maybe we could see Tails and Knuckles next movie? Maybe? Please? Pretty pretty please? And um, can we somehow hint Shadow in there also? He's my favorite hedgehog. Please? Please? So moving on is we have Henry Cavall to make his epic return as Superman. <sighs> I don't really know exactly what is happening with this, um, DC is not my most thing to follow on. <laughs> but um, looking at Variety.com, it looks like Henry Cavall is planning to make his epic return as Clark Kent slash Superman in the upcoming DC films. Henry Cavall, for those that don't know, is very known to play Superman, and he was Superman in The Man of Steel. Batman vs. Superman, which I didn't think that was a great movie to be honest, and The Justice League. I have not seen The Justice League either. I heard it wasn't very good either, but my husband and I were planning to avoid Justice League overall until we heard of something called the Snyder Cut. Now, now to my understanding what my husband and I were discussing last night, the Snyder Cut is kind of like a director's cut. There was things that Snyder wanted to put in the Justice League film, but Warner Brothers said no. And Snyder said that the Snyder Cut for the Justice League will eventually be coming out to HBO Max, which hopefully that will be the case. And for Henry Cavill, there are rumors that he could be um, coming in for cameos like Aquaman 2 and the Batman. And nobody knows exactly who Superman was at the end of Shazam. But they're hoping that um, it is Cavall. Coming from the words of Henry Cavall, he says, quote, 
the cape is still in the closet it's still mine I'm not going to sit quietly in the dark as all the stuff is going on good good for you Henry good for you I can't wait to see your return for Superman and in addition to Superman, he's also made an appearance in Mission Impossible Fallout, and recently he is Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher. And speaking of The Witcher, for those that don't know, The Witcher is greenlining of Season 2. Hopefully we might have a better understanding of, t of the timeline for the Season 2 compared to Season 1. And let's just say, without my husband by my side, I wouldn't have a clue of exactly what the hell was going on in The Witcher Season 1. I guess I can just do like a small tangent of The Witcher. The Witcher was originally based by the books and you also have the video games with it and I think that's how The Witcher got its popularity was because of the video games. Pay attention to the timelines because one thing that I think failed was that it didn't say this timeline, this timeline, and this timeline. And this is where I say, thank God my husband was here, otherwise I would have been totally lost. When we first see Yennefer and just kind of her origin story, that takes place 50 years ago. And the scenes where we see Geralt, that was 15 years ago. And when we see Ciri, the girl with an unusual ultrasonic sound, which my husband said, why do they add this in here? That's the current time. Now I know some people are gonna say, well, Siri and Geralt had a reunion at the end and Geralt hasn't aged a bit. So where are you going with this? Well, as of Geralt being the Witcher, he's not human like us. He ages slowly compared to the other humans. So and that explains why his appearance doesn't change. Disney fans and Kingdom Hearts fans. A Kingdom Hearts TV show is reportedly headed for Disney Plus. This could be good. This could be bad. Um, I, I'm really hoping it's good. Kingdom Hearts is rumored to be a TV show rather than a film. Thank God. Um, Square Enix is planning to work on the original pilot running on Unreal Engine, which is going to be good. So that means it's going to be CG, no live action. Great, 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 great news is that they're not going to butcher some of these characters. The Disney voice actors who originally appeared in the video games are going to make their return. So for example, Jim Cummings, who played multiple Disney characters. One is like Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is in Kingdom Hearts. Winnie the Pooh could possibly come back to the Kingdom Hearts TV show. Adding to that is Bill Farmer, Tony Anselmo. I'm really happy happy with that. And there's no word whether the actors that played like Sora, Kairi, Riku, there's no word that they're going to come back for the TV series. I think they should to be honest. We can get that same feel of Kingdom Hearts. And if all goes well for this Kingdom Hearts TV show, it could be good for those just wanting to kind of get a refresher of the game, even though I should be finishing Kingdom Hearts 3 rather than playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And also newcomers. For those that are interested in Kingdom Hearts but never really cared to play the game, now's your chance. So we're just still waiting for more information for the Kingdom Hearts TV series. I can't wait. I'm excited. Speaking of Disney Plus, Hamilton director Tommy Kale is reportedly planning to adapt Fiddler on the Roof. And the studio that's going to be brought to us is MGM. Now, it's been a while since I heard of MGM titles. But this is the first that I've heard of MGM forever. The Hamilton film adaption is planning to be aired July 1st on Disney+. Plus. We're still up in the air about its censoring. We don't really know if the certain themes of Hamilton is going, to, is going to be censored or not. I can't really tell you exactly what I think is going to be censored just because I've never seen Hamilton. I don't even know the story of Hamilton. So for those that don't know what Fiddler on the Roof is, the setting is in the early 1900s in Russia and it follows a man named Tivyi who has five daughters and he is struggling to maintain his religious backgrounds with his family among those on the outside. Again, I've never seen Fiddler on the Roof. My husband seen it and he said he liked it. It's not his favorite. He said to me, um, you, you know the song If I Were a Rich Man, right? And I said, no. So he had me listen to it. Uh, 
And as soon as I finished listening to the song, I said, why does that song sound so familiar? But that was just something I just kind of want to throw because I just thought it was a funny point. But that's the end of Saturday Night Spotlight. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and checking out exactly what's going on. Thank you for holding in my little tangent tantrum of Kyo Annie. That studio just holds something dear to me, to my husband, to many other anime fans in the world. All anime fans have at least one anime that they love that came from Kyo Annie. The Fate series is close to my husband's heart. Lucky Star is close to my heart. Justice will be served and I can't wait for that day to come. If you like this video, like, subscribe. I have a bell now, so if you're interested in just the Saturday Night Spotlight films, click that bell to be notified for the personal videos or all my videos if you are interested in all of my content. Thank you guys so much and we will see you next week on Saturday Night Spotlight. Our simplest prevention is our biggest protection. Take care of yourselves and others as you practice social distancing, washing hands, and staying at home. Let's get better by starting to make our world better to reduce the spread of COVID-19. See you later on another day.